Just what makes a smartphone smarter? In a word, apps. It was even word of the year in 2010. And if it comes as no surprise, it might be because you recently downloaded a few. Not long ago, Apple reported the 10 billionth download from its app store, which at last count has more than 350,000 apps to choose from. That's not to mention the hundreds of thousands of apps available elsewhere. And they're not just for phones. Apps now run on tablets, even in cars. Apps are even driving how tech companies design their devices, using GPS, cameras, and touchscreens. A recent study found that apps are second only to email and texting in terms of what we use phones for. In third place, talking. It seems as though apps are essentially turning our devices into mini computers. It all got us thinking, what if you applied apps to everything that you did? You might start your day with an alarm clock app. Fortunately, they all come with snooze bars. Does your morning include a dog walk? Well, apps have maps. And if your pooch eats something he's not supposed to, well, there's even an app for that. It's called Pet First Aid. Hey, come on, guys. There's even an app to buy your coffee at Starbucks. Actually, I'll have a green tea, please. If it's a Sunday morning and you've got other plans, well, you can always turn to the Confession app, although the church says it's not meant to replace the real thing. Or what if I find myself in a place that I don't recognize? Stay with me here. You can always use an app like Google Goggles to take a photo of a nearby landmark, and then it tells me that I'm actually in Barcelona home to last month's Mobile World Congress, which connects 60,000 programmers and developers to talk shop about, well, phones, with so CEOs like Eric Schmidt over, of Google. Right. Uh, last year, I predicted, based on a whole bunch of analysis, that within two years, smartphones would surpass PC sales. Well, as usual, I was wrong. Smartphones surpassed PC sales on a quarterly basis last week. The place to be at the Congress? the app Planet, which is where we met Sasha Segan of PCMag.com. And I think apps are what has caused the smartphone revolution to take off. They're about being anything you want them to be, being people's new computers. And what makes those computers personal is the apps. So that's why we have hundreds of thousands of apps out there right now. What is the big deal with these little programs? And well, we aren't talking about software with apps, right? We're talking about software, but especially with phones, you find that people get very personal about things. A phone is almost an extension of your body for a lot of people. It's definitely an extension of your clothing. So you have not just, you know, yeah, they're programs, they're little utilities that help you do what you want to do, but they have part of that psychological mystique around your phone that this is kind of an extension of my hand. This is kind of an extension of my brain. And now I have more abilities. As the popularity of apps has taken off in the past year, tech companies like Google have noticed. Its mobile operating system, called Android, is available on all kinds of phones. And just this past week, it became the most popular type of smartphone in America. And if you still don't understand quite what Android is, don't worry. Well, most people shouldn't have to worry about what Android is, right? They should just have to worry about do they have the phone or the tablet or the device that lets them do what they want, lets them get to the apps that they want and care about. You know, the latest version of Android was developed by this man, right? Matthias Duarte. He says apps are all about individuality. The apps are exactly how the device kind of grows to fit you like a glove. It's much more than just about self-expression. It's all the tools that let you get through the day. It's kind of a, a, a combination Swiss Army knife, suit, car, you know, telephone, everything you want. You know, an app basically becomes that piece of your internet connected life. You can tailor it. Exactly. What you want. Exactly. Those making apps have a lot at stake. It's estimated the global app market will exceed $38 billion by 2015. Clearly not kid stuff, or is it? Does it seem like app programmers are becoming like the new rock stars? 
I think you definitely have the potential to become a rock star, to become famous if you make an application, because everyone knows about them. Everyone's heard of them, everyone's used them. So to see someone like create one, it's definitely like a really cool thing. Because Cameron like Cohen is life. now the ripe old age of 12. Back when he was 11, he created his first app called iSketch. Just draw a little smiley face. <laughs> In 2009, Cohen was suffering from a benign tumor in his leg and underwent surgery. While recovering, rather than just stare at the TV, Cameron decided to teach himself how to make an app. It's like learning a language, I guess. So if you hear, if you're not used to hearing, I'm going to take these examples because they're very hard to know if you don't hear them, like German or Russian or something. If you haven't heard the language, it sounds like insane. The result? The iSketch app, which shot up the charts on Apple's App Store turning a tidy profit, half of which Cohen then donated to the Mattel Children's Hospital at UCLA, so kids there could play with iPads and iPhones. Now they have iPads while you're in like a hospital bed going to the operation room. As soon as you wake up, if you wanted to, you could be playing like all day. Everyone has something that wants something there now. It's really, really amazing. And it seems games appeal to kids of all ages, especially a certain game that pits birds against pigs. Angry Birds is made by the Finnish company Rovio. It's been the number one app in 69 countries, including the United States. Part puzzle, part goofy animation, it's been downloaded almost 100 million times. And yet Rovio CEO, Mikhail Head, says even good apps don't always turn a profit. In the App Store, it, it is quite a brutal market. Um, I would say that the top 100 games are, are making a nice amount of money. And then uh, it, that steeply declines from there on. Head says the company struggled with more than 50 apps before hitting the big time with Angry Birds. Yeah, but well, you never know what happens in games. So um, that's, that's the beauty of games, though, is that anything, anything is possible there. And one, one part to, to game making, which is the, the science of it and how, how to actually make it work, and the other part is the art of, uh, of what, what works for people. While popular apps make the news, there's even an app that is the news. Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation released The Daily this year, with contributions from journalists all over the world, including myself. I think that a lot of the media has spent enormous amounts of time trying to save their old brands, rather than trying to look to the future of what these machines can do. It's the first major news publication that's available only as an app. Jesse Angelo is The Daily's editor-in-chief. When we first started, we thought to ourselves, are, are we making a daily newspaper? Are we making a, a, a daily website? And then once we started designing it and showing it to people, everyone said, wow, that magazine looks amazing. And then we said, well, but look, what about all the video? Maybe this is a daily television show. And eventually we just said, we're the daily. So wait a minute. If the app revolution starts to overwhelm you, just remember that there's even an app that will help you log out once in a while. Of course there is. Yes, indeed, there does seem to be an app for just about everything, and that includes us. Just arrived at the iTunes App Store is a new way to listen for our Sunday morning trumpet. Mm -hmm.